Hey everybody and welcome to this video on using functions in Twine. Um, so I'm just going to be using the uh, game that we made during the uh, the if statements and variables videos uh, and just continue on from uh, just using this as a template. Um, so functions, what they are. So when writing code in your stories, functions are special devices that can be used in expressions in place of variables or values. So essentially they're something that or exists in the code that you can do that will return a value. So it will it will give you something to work from or something to uh, a number that you can use or um, a string that you can use in your story. And these are referred to as macros in Twine, although I think as far as I'm concerned, the, a function and a macro are the, the same thing. Um, so I'm gonna, the, the place to look at all the different functions available in Twine is on the, the Harlow uh, manual. So remember I, I talked a little bit about one of the previous videos about the story format and that the default one is Harlow. Um, so you wanna look at the functions available for that story format so if you head to the twine homepage twinery.org and if you go to the the wiki here which is for tutorials and documentation and then go to the halo reference link just here um, the documentation and articles are a mirror of those found here so if you head to this website this has basically got everything that you need to know all the functions available to you um, and if you read through this you'll basically be able to figure out like everything possibly you, you could do in twine um, so the, the point of these videos is to sort of give you the basics of what you need to be able to then go off and find out for yourself how to do specific features so another way you can find this i'm pretty sure if you just google twine harlow harlow uh it will be the top site uh twine to .neocities.org and this is the twine2 manual so this bar on the left if you scroll down it you will be able to sort of see links to different sections of this manual um, how to do all sorts of different things like obviously styling uh, with things like creating italic text uh, bold text but if you scroll down you'll see how to write bulleted lists um, stuff to do with uh, the formatting of your stories but as you go down you get this list of macros so these are functions so some of these we've already covered so you've got the set function which talks about settings variables to certain um, values you've also got the if function so this is like if this is this then do this which we've already covered um, but I'm just going to show you a few examples of some of these that you can use that you might find interesting. Um, so one of the ones that are quite uh, neat is the date and time ones. So what these do is they read your system clock and they will output data based on what it finds there. So for example, if I look at the weekday function or macro, um, the good thing about this manual is it will say what the function is, what it does, and also give an example of how it is used. Um, so this shows that you just use the function and it will output a string, which will be text based on what the current day of the week it is. So if I just copy that that function name weekday, open up the uh, the college day at, day at college game. Um, We'll open up this. So your your name is player name. You wake up to the sound of your alarm buzzing, uh, and then I'll just add a little bit in here that says it is a uh, weekday morning. So what this will do is it will detect it will read your system clock, detect what day of the week it is, and then print the day of the week here. So if I just test that out quickly, just to demonstrate the use of that particular function. So start game. Um, so there you go. It is a Wednesday morning. Today is a, a Wednesday. Yep. So that's that's right. Um, some other really good ones uh, that can add a bit of randomization uh, 
to your story is the uh, random or either functions. So let me just, there we go. So we've got the either. So what this does is you can input certain values and it will just pick randomly from those and then output it as um, as the text or you can set a variable to one of these at random. So to show you an example of this, when you use the key on the door after you've retrieved the key in the game, um, it will say you head downstairs and have so then I'll use the either function so either so the functions are written out as open bracket the name of the function and then the colon um, and then you can input values separated by commas so I'm going to say either uh, toast or Cheerios or um, let's say oh I've missed it I've missed a Peach mark there, Cheerios or nothing, um, or bacon sandwich. Um or pancakes. Okay. So these are the options for breakfast. So either have one of those and then for breakfast. So if I shut that down. And then test out that function. What it will do is it will it will it will go. You head downstairs and have, and then it will pick one of these options at random and then print it because it's a string. Um, so if I hit play here, start game, get up, uh, get the key, use key on door. You head downstairs and have Cheerios for breakfast. Okay. Um, also, I'll use this as an opportunity to show you how you can test out the test from current. Uh, store current uh, passage so if i hover over this one the use key on door uh, and click on the little bug icon it will start the the game from that passage so head downstairs and have cheers for breakfast i'll just refresh that so at random it should call with different options so i've got nothing for breakfast uh, pancakes um and then it'll it should just randomly generate uh different options each time so that's that's quite a cool one the, th the other thing with that is you can use it to set variables with so i can say for example here where i've got set player name to stuart so i can actually use the either function in here so i could say pl set player name to either uh, and then stuart will be an option so you got to make sure you have your close bracket still inside this function. So set play name to either Stuart um, or uh, Dave or Susan. So that will randomly select one of those options. And then later in the game, when I reference this variable here, it will have selected one of those at random. So if I just press play, start game your name is Stuart if I refresh that start game okay so now it's picked Susan so it's done that just as a, a random thing so this is a good way of uh, implementing randomization into your into your code um, another good way of doing that is the random function so this is written out like this uh, and this would be an example of how you might use that so this could be good for um say you've got an rpg type game and you want to have random damage dealt to a player or something like that you would set a variable called damage uh, to and then a random number between whatever number you put in here and whatever number you put in here in this example it's for a dice roll so in this case it looks the passage is you roll the dice it lands with the and then the variable name face up so this will return either one two three four five or six at random so either is good for inputting specific uh options that you want to output random is good for producing a random number so you could also have random encounters in your game so you could say um set uh encounter to a random number between one and ten and then you could have a if 
encounter is one, then this happens. If encounter is two, then this happens. So you can have what for each and each of them. Um, so you, it's it's like one in ten chance of one of these things happening. Um, I'm not going to show you that in this story because I can't think off the top of my head anything that I could do in there. Uh, but the last function that I'm going to quickly show you is the prompt one. That's that is quite uh, interesting. Uh, so I've got to find and then prompt. Uh, so what prompt does? Hang on. There we go. Uh, so what prompt does is it opens up a, a pop-up box, a pop-up dialog box to allow the player to input text. And then with that, you can do what you like. So for in this example here, it's saying set name to prompt your name, please, so that the player can actually input their name. So uh, that's the, the example text that's used. So, oops. so I'm just going to copy that line of code, copy it into my first one. So rather than setting the player name to either one of those things, I can put set player name to prompt your name, please. And then uh, like it, this is like the example text that it would it would display. So you could change this to um, John, John Smith or something like that, um, whatever you want. So now if I play this game, um, it should ask me to input my name. So yeah, your name please. And then you can put in whatever in here. So okay, start game. Your name is zero. Oh, okay, that's not worked correctly. I wonder why that's happened. Um, set, oh right, yeah, it's because our variable that we called in here was player name. And that one's just used name. So I'm just going to copy that and then replace this. So set player name to prompt. So now when we test it. So I'll just put Stuart in this time. Click OK. Start game. Your name is Stuart. But if I restart, I can just type in anything in here. Uh, anything start game your name is anything and then whenever i reference that variable now it will remember that i've set it to the text that was input in the prompt box so if you want to learn more about functions read through the twine manual have a look through this and see what um what functions sort of uh pop out at you um to give it a try um and then have a have a go at using them so there's there's all sorts that you can do with it here um i've shown you a few examples but the, the rest of them are, are here to, to find out and use for yourself um that's it for now i might do some more videos on this soon um but yeah thanks thanks for watching hope this has been helpful